ছিল ট্রুথ দ্য ট্রুথ ইজ দ্যাট দেয়ার ইজ এন অল পারভেডিং পাওয়ার অফ গডস লাভ উইচ ডাজ অল দি লিভিং ওয়ার্ক in this universe the second truth is that <coughs> we are not this body mind this intellect or this ego or conditionings but we are the pure spirit <coughs> when the kundalini rises through these six centers it of course integrates your being that is there's no quarrel between your mind your heart and your attention you become completely integrated and so empowered that you can enjoy their integration when you become the spirit what happens to us to understand that we have to understand the nature of the spirit <coughs> spirit is the reflection of god almighty on our heart we are the reflectors these reflectors start working since we were stones we can call them or matter then living creatures till we reach a state when we are human beings the spirit is expressed in our heart in the best way <coughs> but it is still in a witness state watching us all the time what we are doing it doesn't come into our attention he is just watching but when the kundalini rises and pierces through your fontanel bone area so this is the seat of the god almighty and the reflection of the spirit is in your heart so first of all it connects your brain with your heart as a result <coughs> a kind of a pulsation in sanskrit is called as panda <coughs> starts flowing on your central nervous system which you can call it as cool vibrations also it is correlated with the all pervading power <coughs> which is flowing within our being because of this connection <coughs> the spirit is the one <coughs> that is the absolute truth absolute truth means there is no other truth than that for example if you have 10 children and tie up their eyes and ask them <coughs> what is the matter with this gentleman they will all raise the same finger supposing they raise this finger <coughs> or this finger any finger like the other day somebody asked me mother why they were all asking 
what is your relationship with your father? Because there is indication on this finger, on the right hand, that there's something wrong with the fatherhood. Either you are not a good son or he is not a good father. It could be even the husband. And you ask the gentleman, he'll be surprised that, how do you know? So the truth, which is absolute, comes to you on your fingertips. You immediately know what's wrong with the other person and what's wrong with you. Now you don't talk the language like English or Hindi, Marathi, Sanskrit, but you speak the language of the centers. This is what happened when the disciples of Christ were blessed by Holy Ghost and they got their Realization. <coughs> that they started speaking the language of the centers. So you don't say that this center of yours is bad because you have got ego. You don't say that. You just have to say that Agya is not working all right. Sir Jogis would come and tell me, Mother, please solve my problem of Agya. What's the matter? I can't bear it. It's a headache. So he doesn't see it as ego, but he sees it as a causal of it. The cause of his headache is his ego, and he sees it as Agya Chakra. So he comes and tells me, actually, if you see in short, it is, he says, I've got too much ego, please remove it, Mother, from my head. So you reach that subtler state when you understand what is fundamentally, basically wrong with you, because these are the fundamentals on which our physical, mental, emotional and spiritual being rests or is nourished. So immediately you know basically what's wrong with you, and you know yourself nobody has to tell you. Now supposing somebody is very much conditioned, so his chakra at the back side goes off. Now if you tell that person you are a conditioned person, he'd not like it. But he himself after Realization will say, Mother, please solve my problem of the back agya, means there's some conditioning. Could be coming from anything. And you face yourself directly. You don't have to sort of sit down and analyze yourself, but you just see it clearly on your centers what's wrong with you. And if you can relate one center, another center, combinations of these centers, and actually what is the matter with you, immediately you will know what the problem is. So you know the Absolute Truth. Now you have known from India, many uh, people have come as false gurus and everybody tells me about them. They are just here to make money. There's a kite camouflage they have. But still with Realization you immediately know that he is a cheat or he is a demon, demonic person. You have to just put your hands like this and you can feel it the vibrations, which are not pulsations of a tremor or anything, but cool, breeze-like things that flow, suddenly becomes hot. Sometimes they might create a little blister also, for the time being, because you become like a barometer. <coughs> and absolute things, you know, even if you have a painting which is a copy of a real painting, and people don't know. Only by putting hands towards it, immediately will know if it is of the real one or not. Any fundamental question can be asked and you get the answer on your fingertips and you know what is the truth. So that your attention itself becomes enlightened. With this attention, which is enlightened, 
you can feel the vibrations of another person, the chakras of another person. But apart from that, <coughs> second thing, that this enlightened attention is dynamic. Sitting down here, if you put attention to something, it works. It works. Of course, you have to develop that state, that higher state of doubtless awareness. Anywhere you put your attention, it works. So the connection with the Divine is that this attention, wherever you put it, like a remote control, it works. A person who is a realized soul, is extremely compassionate and extremely dynamic. Of course, you never feel your age, you never get tired, you work very hard, because all the time the energy is flowing, you become an expert on understanding what is falsehood and what is true. The discrimination, the Divine discrimination is so acute and so penetrating that you cannot find faults with it. <coughs> I know of a person who came to me after the Realization. I told him that, why don't you take to the interior decoration of ships? He said, I don't know, from one timber to another timber. I said, just start. And he became very rich with that. He somehow or other, he said, I knew this was this timber, I knew this one was that timber. So you just know after a certain state that you reach that this is this, this is this. <coughs> because your attention is so pure and clear, you become extremely creative. Many people who have never spoken on the stage, have never said a sentence on the stage, who had stage fear and all that, are great orators today. Any walk of life you enter into, you are absolutely confident of yourself and you know you are properly guided. And the nature of the Spirit is that it gives you an attention that doesn't fritter away. You don't look at things which are of no use. But once you see something, the whole picture is in your mind, like a photogenic picture. Whenever you want to think about it, you get the whole thing even the folds of the clothes and everything, the face, everything comes to you absolutely clear. The memory becomes so sharp, even at an old age, that people are surprised. And you do not try to memorize too many things, it's just there. One lady in America got realization, she had a shop, Indian lady. She said, I meticulously knew every... Uh, bit of my shop and I knew what has consignment has come, what has gone, everything. I don't know anything now, but I'm making big profits. I said, that's it. Why should you break your neck with all this burden? Just you should have the profit finished. And she was amazed how she's making so much money when she is not knowing all these things and she's living in complete joy. So the another attribute of the Spirit is that it is the source of joy. Joy is not like happiness and unhappiness. If your ego is pampered, then you feel happy. When it is not pampered, you feel unhappy. Joy is a state where you just enjoy everything. Because you are beyond thoughts, 
Just see this beautiful carpet beyond thought. The one who has created this has put all his joy in it in creation. And that joy becomes so abstract and starts falling on your being and soothes you down. Such a person is extremely relaxed, not agitated. He doesn't waste his energy in unnecessary things. As it is happening these days, people are become overactive, overanxious, stress and all those things. As a result of that, people have now developed a horrible disease called as your peace disease. In this disease, your conscious mind absolutely gets tired and fagged out. All the time watching the time, all the time running, especially in America, I told about this disease about ten years back and now it's there. And I've seen those people that are carried just like reptiles, like a big fish on the shoulder of people. They think all right but they cannot lift their hand, they cannot lift their legs, if it is to be done consciously, but unconsciously they may. What a disease! So this over-alertness and too much of worry and these things, the norms of modern life are so telling upon our nerves that our nerves themselves become tired and ultimately the conscious mind becomes the becomes tired. I have to tell you that in Sahaja Yoga we have cured one Australian of AIDS, one, only one. I should say we cured five but they all got lost. They couldn't get over their bad habits. One we have cured. He's still living and kicking seven years. But we don't want to say that we cure, it can be cured with your Kundalini because if you start saying all of them will pour down but they have no will to live and they have no willpower to overcome that bad habit. Because we tried it with people, they again went back to the same bad habits, they couldn't get out of it. But it happens because the Spirit has the power to cure you also when it is connected through this Kundalini to the Divine. It cures you completely, you feel very healthy, and all the time you feel very fresh. You do not run after things like uh, manufacturers start something, now today this dress, tomorrow that dress, today this, nothing of the kind. You don't run amok, you have discretion. You know what to wear, what to use. That's how you solve your ecological problem. Because a new dimension also comes into your awareness, which we call as collective consciousness, but also you become an universal being, because spirit is universal. So you don't worry about yourself only, you worry about the whole universe, worry in the sense that you want to do something about it. Immediately your attention will go to something that's happening now, and you try to think and pray that this should be all right, and it works out. You definitely become a much wider personality. It's not only limited to one little person, but it is a universal thing. A new religion we can call is enlightened into your balances, which we call as the pure, innate, universal religion, which encompasses all the principles of all the religions all the people of the world and you go beyond these wrong ideas of different religions and races and this and that and that. You just start feeling you are part and parcel of the whole. It's not again thinking, it is the feeling. Thinking can be temporary but feeling is permanent and not emotional but is the feeling on your central nervous system. It's such a relationship of brotherhood and sisterhood develops because this is a universal being which is enlightening your whole life and you are completely changed. You are surprised at yourself. Your temper, your greed, your lust, all these things 
absolutely drop out and you see clearly what is your need, what you need to be spiritually all right. You seek your comfort of your spirit. You become extremely dynamic, extremely creative and extremely compassionate. You will be surprised when I went to Russia first. There were 25 Germans who came rushing to Russia. You won't believe, if you see those German Sajogis, you won't believe they are from the same Gestapo lot, nothing. They are so gentle, the gentlest of all people, I think, so gentle. So I was amazed, I said, how is it you are all here? He said, Mother, are we not duty-bound to rectify ourselves of these people who have suffered on account of our forefathers. I went to Canada, I was surprised that a Canadian told me, Canadian surgery is very surprising, Mother, don't you think we have been plunderers? I said, why? We came to Canada, we plundered them, we have taken away their lands, we have killed all of them, and now we are nicely settled down here as great people. We are the worst, we are not only migrants, but we are the worst, we are the plunderers. We came in their land and plundered them. This awakening, this awareness is very rare. I was so surprised that they should think that way, that we have plundered these people. We have no business to take away all their lands. He said, at least some part must be given to them as their own, they don't own any land while the whole thing belongs to them. I was surprised at the Spanish in South America, they felt the same way. All of them feel the same way about it. They said, what about the Spaniards who came here? What they have done to America, to South America and to North America, they are all these Spaniards and then others who came and plundered these people, killed them, finished them, took away all their land, and now these people have no place to go to. This awareness, I was so shocked. How could they get this awareness into their head? This comes when you think that we have something to do for these people who are downtrodden. Because of us they are downtrodden. We have to help them to raise them at a higher level. So the attention goes to the poor, attention goes to the downtrodden, the attention goes to the people who don't have. And when attention goes, works out. It definitely works out. And their solutions come up. After all, we cannot live with prosperity if there is poverty anywhere. We can never live. There will be complications, there will be problems. So we have to think about universal understanding. And that communism is not the problem, it is the solution, neither capitalism but Sahaja Yoga. In Sahaja Yoga, you start feeling oneness with everyone. And if people who get realization, they feel such oneness, such understanding, such love, such friendship, such help, I'm amazed at them. Such beautiful people they are. I mean, it's all right, I don't take money after all. I come from a rich family, we have lots of money of our own. But what about these Sajogis who don't take a single pie from anyone, work so hard, they have been going all around Australia and working it out, and quietly, it's not advertised, we do not claim anything, nothing, very quietly, they are working it out. And this is something one has to realize, that this new race has to come up. Or if you want to go on with what sort of a world we had, then we, have, we might have a war, we might get all finished, anything is possible, because that is ignorance. But when there is light, we start seeing, the whole relationship. Supposing it all becomes dark and you all start run, running hell and scat, you'll trample on other people, you'll jump on other people, you will not know what to do. 
That's what happens when the stamping takes place. So the quietude inside, the balance inside, is, achieves its enlightenment. And that's what has to happen to all of us. It's a very important thing that is happening all over the world. I saw so many people walking, young people walking, and I felt, what is their direction? What is the purpose of their life? Where are they going? We all have a purpose, we all have a meaning, and we have all that glory and beauty within ourselves. Now if it is free, if it is your own, why not express that divinity fully and manifest it? So this is some of the aspects of spirit, I have told you. The aspect of this all-pervading power is tremendous and miraculous. <clears throat> if I tell you, you won't believe, but somehow it works out. It works out. It knows how to work it out. When you are in the Kingdom of God, it's not the Kingdom of Australia, India or England, it's such an efficient government that any problem you have, anything you have, it just solves in no time. It is so blissful. You'll be amazed how everything works out, how enemies become friends, how families become one, how children respect their parents and parents love their children, all misunderstandings vanish. And this new generation is really so special, I must say, that we all should aspire to be there to enjoy. May God bless you. No questions? Nobody has given questions in writing? So far. Yes. You've given in writing? No, no, it's not fire. When I meditate, I get a feeling as if I'm in flames. What's it? Is he it? says uh, when he meditates, he gets a sensation of being on fire in flames. Oh, that's not. Then the meditation is something wrong. There's something wrong with your meditation, definitely. It is just shown as your heart. And to show the warmth of the heart, they have put that color, it's not fire, just the warmth of the heart. They have to so, show this color, just to show this not, it's on the contrary, extremely cooling. In Sahaja Yoga, when you will medit me meditate, heart is the first thing that cools down. So the meditation you are doing is in a way not correct, and you cannot do meditation, you have to be in meditation. That's the point. So when the Kundalini rises, she creates a state of thoughtless awareness. That is the state one has to achieve. Then you are stationed in your present, not in the past or the future. I think you were not here yesterday, I told about it. But in any case, you come and see, just now only you will see that you will have a very soothing feeling within yourself. So there is no fire at all. It's a very soothing flames, extremely soothing. Uh, in the Bible it's written, I'll appear before you like tongues of flames. Now these tongues of flames, if you see, they are 
they are frames, look like frames, but they are very soothing, cooling. It's just the opposite what we know of fire. How can you trigger the awakening of the Kundalini? That's what we are going to do now. Very good question. I'm happy to know. That's very good. There was one question, uh, uh, there was a question, uh, there was a family with two children who cannot speak. I wondered what the problem was. But they have to come to the ashram, then we'll try on them because they were a family in India also, children never spoke but they have started speaking now. They should come to our ashram, we'll work it out. We can solve all this problem if you come to the collective and these things can be solved, it's not so important, so difficult, but depends on. If it is something from the very childhood or birth or something, then sometimes it doesn't work out. It is worth trying. You see, like any medicine you cannot guarantee hundred percent, you cannot say hundred percent. But most of the diseases are cured, especially incurable diseases are cured, no doubt. When he is in meditation, Srimataji, he feels very thoughtlessly aware, mm. but when he is at work and perhaps things aren't going too well, then he loses this, he wonders why. See, it is the question of your connection established fully. Supposing this connection is not all right, you have to just establish it. That's the point. With little assiduity, you should establish this connection. Once it is established, then you will never go down. That's the main thing, is that you should try to achieve the state of doubtless awareness. It takes hardly, if it's some people only in three, four sittings they do it. Some people take one month, but most of them get by one month, they are there. So one has to work it out. I'll see. He says, uh, Srimataji, I am frightened to get close to people I am frightened to see my own death. I have... So I understand. That's why it's written it down so we should not read. Now this can be solved, my child, all right? Because this is the power of love. All right? This is nothing difficult, very simple. It's due to some conditionings in your life, maybe. Yes? Uh, how do you communicate to people when they are restricted by dogma and they can't get a religion where they don't want to listen to anything that they seem to be out of their scope of belief? How do you communicate with people who are bound by their dogma and belief? Who are? bound by dogma and belief, they are, they are rigid in their beliefs. <laughs> See, love can melt anything, isn't it? And there is a way. First you have to logically talk to them. 
divine logic is very convincing. But if somebody is a stone, there is no need to break your head with a stone. But logically you can explain. And if they have dogmas, they will melt, because you can ask them a simple question, what did you get out of it? What powers did you get out of it? A simple question should be asked, and that's how the dogmas will fall. But mostly it happens like this, I've seen, if there are many friends and all family, everybody gets to Sahaja Yoga and they see the way they are, then automatically they come. Mostly dogmas are fashions, so it's a fashion. And these people who have dogmas are people who do not seek truth. But once they see also, sometimes they come, but we cannot guarantee that everybody will be there. According to John, he just said 144,000, we have already crossed that limit. So I don't know how many will be there. It's a question of one's own seeking and also they have to deserve it. They should be worthy of it. Can Sahaja Yoga help someone with mental illness like schizophrenia? Yes, it has helped many. Schizophrenia is due to possessions which comes and goes. It has helped many people. First the frequency starts enlarging and after some time we can get rid of it. It has helped many people, I should say, especially in America so many people are suffering from schizophrenia. It can be epilepsy, schizophrenia, these two have, we have tried. There's three questions here on meditation, Srimataji. Is there any special pot, position or place to meditate? No, nothing of the kind. How do you control the flow of thoughts as they keep flowing? Yes, that is what you don't have to do, your Kundalini will do it. Your Kundalini will create that situation for you, you don't have to. And should I meditate on something? Should I meditate on something? No, you don't have to meditate, but the best is that you have to come and see these people and they will tell you how to meditate. It's only minimum of five minutes in the morning and ten minutes in the evening, not more than that. It starts with five minutes, but later on one can go on meditating it for a longer period, you start enjoying yourself. Yes, it is curable. This is due to liver. It's a liver problem. Allergies are due to liver, but also it's tickling from the left side, and so it can be cured. We have cured that. It can be cured. All right. Some people take more time and some people take less time, but I've seen most of them get cured, most of them. It seems to be a model of, of an intimate relationship with the Supreme Intelligence. It, you just mentioned possessions and things like that. Uh, could you tell me more about that sort of thing? He sees this as a, a model of a relationship with the Divine. Uh, you mentioned possessions, what did you mean by that? Well, that's another subject which I've not touched so far. But we have on two sides, left side and right side, if you see. The left side looks after our past and the right side looks after our, our future. Left side is the power of our Desire, the right side is the power of our action. 
So when we start moving towards the left too much, people are feeling sad and all the time crying and weeping and talking of their past and all sorts of uh, depressions they get, then they start moving towards the left. On the left side is all your past means your subconscious, subconscious of today, whatever has happened, subconscious of this month, of this year, then of this life, subconscious of previous life also. Ultimately, there is the collective subconscious on the left-hand side, where everything that is dead since our creation is stored up. If you enter into that area, you might get possessed by viruses, so you get diseases which are caused by viruses, like cancer. Or you might get possessed. And some people can put, if you are a weak-minded person also, can possess through mesmerism and things like that. So this is the left side. The right side is where you start moving into future, very future planning and all that, then you enter into supraconscious area and then into collective supraconscious. In that area you are possessed by people who are extremely ambitious, who die without fulfilling your ambitions and they make you very ambitious also and ultimately you become a recluse because you can't bear so many personalities on top of one personality. So in short I've told you, but it's a very large subject. So schizophrenia also is a kind of a position, also all kind of mental problems are due to positions which can be cured. Only thing, your attention has to be brought to the center and that is done by the Kundalini awakening. Say this is a sari of mine like an attention and the Kundalini is coming up like that, so she pulls the sari. And when she pierces here, then the Divine Light starts flowing on all the sides of this attention. So only thing, if your attention is too much is on the left side, you are in trouble or if too much on the left, right side, you become overactive, very futuristic and you have other problems. Especially like liver problems you get, you get what you call heart problems, you get asthma, also kidney problems, all these come from too much right-sided behavior, means very futuristic, people get these troubles. Diabetes also comes to that. A lady has a, a son who's now nine years old and has had a skin disorder since he was a baby. Can Kundalini raising help that? What does he have? Just a skin disorder. Huh? What is that called? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. This is all right. Yes. This is all right. We have some doctors luckily here who are surgeons. Very well qualified doctors we have here who are surgeons. You'd be surprised. And thank God in this country we can have alternate treatment. Of course, I mean, we don't give any medicines or anything, so nobody can charge us with anything. But it works. It's a Christian Srimad. Huh? It is a Christian Srimad. Are you a real Christian or just baptized by a church? A Christian must get his realization to understand Christ. How will you recognize Christ? This Christianity has done no good to us, sir. It has done no good to us and if you belong to that, you can go ahead with it. But if you want to have your realization, you can stay here. If you are happy with Christians, you go. What about calling so many Azerbaijans, these Christians have done it. 
Spaniards who went there, they were Christians only. And the ones who ruled us for 300 were Christians, they were Christians. Killing people, when did Christ teach you that? Christians are on the other side of Christ. They have nothing to do with Christ, just talking big. Hypnotism should never be encouraged. It is not all right. I've seen all people who get into hypnosis suffer quite a lot. There's no need to hypnotize, I just don't know why even the doctor should hypnotize people. There's no need at all to hypnotize anyone. How do I stay open to the way of God? Huh? How do I stay open to the way of God? Out of the way. No, in the way of God. How do I stay open to, to of, God? Huh? She's asking, how do I stay open to the way of to God? Well, uh, I think through the raising of the Kundalini. <laughs> you see, this is what I'm telling you, that you have to have your realization. Once you get your Realization, then you are connected to God, otherwise you are not connected. That's why these people who say we are Christians, we are Muslims, we are this and that and that, are nowhere. There's no religion there. Once you get your Realization, then you are in contact with this all-pervading power. Terrible things are happening. happening. You must see what things are happening in Christian uh, community. It's terrible things. This is nothing. If you see in Canada, there were there was a school of some bishops. They abused the children regularly, and now they are under uh, arrest. There are priests in Austria. It's a book on that, in German language. Who was? who has confessed that most of the priests have kids who are married women and they have children from them. Can you imagine all these things happening in the name of Christ, who said, Thou shalt not have adulterous eyes. How can they say they are Christians? I can't understand. I just don't understand why they are behaving like this. I'm sorry, but I love you very much, all right? You'll get all that love you never got. May God bless you. Maybe there are some of them are really de de demonic people, absolutely demonic. In England, can you imagine two children are killed by their parents? What is this child abuse nonsense going on? Can you... I mean, impossible to understand for anybody who is a human being. How can you torture your children like this? Two children are killed by every week by the parents who are legal children. They have no patience for their children. That's the reason, I think, in India most of the children are born and we are having a population problem. How could you do that to any child? Anyone? Thank God you are alive, all right? May God bless you. This one here, so. Such what? cruelties, from where does it come in this? And mostly they are Christians and Christians.
Christ has said, let the children come to me. If you have to go to the kingdom of God, you have to become like children. What is that love that he talked about? Just money makers? All right, this part is of diet and exercises and all that. We will tell you when you come, because according to the centers, we'll tell you. Supposing you are a liver patient, you are right-sided, you have to take a diet. If you are left-sided, you have to take a diet. But that we'll tell you when you come to us very clearly and you will really enjoy your health. Where is this dogma fellow is going? Come along. <laughs> now don't ask any more questions. I think we have had enough. Now people must be tired, all right? What's the effect of? I think there's too many questions. Only Sydney people are very questioning that, I think. <laughs> the young lass was just saying, is it true that the human being is entering a new phase in its evolution to spirituality? Of course, of course, you have seen the point. What she said is true, that we are entering into a new evolutionary phase. That's it. We have seen the point. Let us see how many want to enter into it. Yeah. Now, I think, you see, all these personal questions, all these questions can be very easily answered, everything. But as I told you, I want you to ask me questions because you are free to ask. It's complete freedom. But also, you know, should know that I've been doing this kind of a job for the last 21, 22 years, so I'm quite an expert myself. And I know the style of questions and what they ask. But the main thing is now, is that it's a mental feat. What we have to have your Kundalini awakening for that, this mental feat is not necessary. So even if I answer your questions all right, there's no guarantee that your Kundalini will rise. So forget about all these questions and answers and everything, even my lecture you can forget if you want to. And just now we will have our session of Realization. So before we start, as I told yesterday again, <clears throat> I have to tell you because some people are absolutely new today, that there are three conditions which you have to fulfill. The first condition is that you have to be absolutely confident about yourself that you will get your Realization, absolutely confident. You shouldn't doubt yourself at all, whatever you might have done, that's for sure. Be confident, all of you, that you will get your Realization. The second condition is that please do not feel guilty at all at this point, for anything. Please don't feel guilty. Meaning, forget your past, you are here in the present, and in my eyes and in the eyes of the Divine, you are not guilty. See, after all, as I said yesterday, we are all human beings, and if we have done any mistakes, it's all right, we are not gods. So please don't feel guilty for anything whatsoever. When you feel guilty, you catch on the center on the left hand side here. Yeah. Which is a very risky thing, you don't know, with that catching you get what you call a disease called angina. You get also spondylitis. Also your organs might become lethargic. So please don't feel guilty, 
it's a dangerous thing physically also. We'll explain to you later on how it happens, but just now please listen to me. Don't feel guilty. And thirdly, which is also a very simple condition, is that you have to forgive everyone in general. Some people say it's very difficult. But logically, whether you forgive or don't forgive, you don't do anything. Do you do anything? Nothing. But when you don't forgive, then you play into wrong hands. You torture yourself while the person who has troubled you is very happy and you are torturing on his behalf. But the worst thing is that this center, Agya, this one is like this, crossed. It won't open like this, it has to open. Otherwise the Kundalini won't pass through unless and until you forgive. And you don't have to think about them because it's sometimes very painful to even think about them. You just have to say in your heart, I forgive all of them. You'll feel much lighter, immediately you'll feel lighter. You just say, I forgive all of them, forget it, forget the past. In short, you should be very presently placed yourself that you are human beings, that you are seekers of truth and that you are going to enter into the kingdom of God. So you should be very pleasantly placed towards yourself. In Sanskrit they say prasanna chitta. That is going to help us very much. Now this Kundalini is the power of pure desire. So you must have pure desire within yourself that you want to have Realization, that's all. If that desire is there, it will all work out. <coughs> but in any case, even if you get Realization, you must remember this is the beginning and you have to develop this sprouting into a tree. For that you don't have to pay anything, it can work out very easily, but you have to come to the collective. This is the only thing you have to do for your cleansing, for anything, you have to be just in the collective, it's so simple, you don't have to go to Himalayas, you don't have to stand on your feet, one foot or on your head, nothing of the kind. You don't have to starve, sacrifice, suffer, nothing. Only thing, you have to take some time out to be in the collective and they will tell you what sort of meditation you require, as your problem may be. Please do that. Next year I want at least all of you to be grown up like very matured, beautiful personalities of Sajoga. Absolutely knowledgeable. So, these are very simple three conditions I have told. Now you have to take out your shoes because this Mother Earth helps us a lot. Both the feet have to be apart from each other because, as I told you, left and right are two different powers. One thing I must confess, that I cannot force Self-realization on you. You have to ask for it. I respect your freedom. If you do not want to have it, then you should leave the hall but should not sit down here and watch other people, it's not civil. So those who want to have their Self-realization should be here, those who do not want to have should leave the hall. It will be very kind of them to do that. But those who want to have it are very welcome. So now, please put your left hand towards Me like this, which means that you are desirous of having Self-realization. Now, <coughs> you have to put 
your right hand on your heart because right hand is the power of action and in the heart resides the spirit. So first we put our right hand on our heart. With this hand we are going to enrich our centers with our full self-confidence. If you are the spirit, you are the guide, you become in that light, the guide of your life, so you become the master. So now take your hand in the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side, we are only working on the left hand side. Now this center is for your mastery, is created by great prophets and great real masters in the ancient times which is to be enlightened. Then you take your hand in the low portion of your abdomen on the left hand side, is the center of pure knowledge. Pure knowledge is the knowledge of the divine laws and how to work them out. Now you move your right hand in the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side again and again you have to move your right hand on your heart. Now in the corner of your left shoulder and neck and turn your head to your right as far as possible. I have already told you about this center that if you feel guilty this goes out of order and it's, I think today again I feel there is a lot of it here. So please forgive yourself and don't feel guilty. Now you have to take your right hand on top of your forehead in such a manner that your fingers on one side and thumb on the other side of the temple and put down your head slowly as far as possible. Here you have to ask or you have to say that you ha are forgiving everyone in general. Now take back your right hand on the back side of your head, just now you don't have to say anything later on. Now here, without feeling guilty, without counting your mistakes, for your satisfaction you have to ask forgiveness from the Divine Power. We'll do that later on, I'm just showing you now. Now stretch your hand fully, right hand, left hand on your lap comfortably. Now here, is the seventh center which you have to open out with your self-confidence. Stretch your palm fully, put it on top of the fontanelle bone area, which was a soft bone in your childhood. Now, put down your head. This is the actualization of your baptism, is actualization. Put down your head and now move your scalp. With the fingers stretched out, you can have a good pressure, please stretch out your fingers, this is very important. Put down your head and now you have to move your scalp very slowly, seven times clockwise, seven times clockwise. That's all we'll have to do, that's all. Now you have to sit not very uh, uncomfortably, but very comfortably, it is straight, not bending too much and not bending 
forward to begin with. You can take out your spectacles if you want, because in any case you have to close your eyes. So better take out your spectacles and don't open your eyes till I tell you. I hope you have put both your feet apart from each other. Now please put your right hand on your heart. And now please close your eyes. Not very tightly, just in a simple way as we sleep. Here now. You can call me Mother or you can call me Shri Mataji, whatever you feel like. You have to ask me a very fundamental question about yourself. Three times, please ask, Mother, am I the Spirit? Ask this question three times. Mother, am I the Spirit? If you are the Spirit, you are your Master. So now please take down your right hand in the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side and here you ask another question. Mother, am I my own Master? Ask three times please. Mother, am I my own Master? I have already told you that I respect your freedom and I cannot force pure knowledge on you. So now please take your right hand in the low portion of your abdomen and press it hard and here you have to say six times because this center has got six petals. So you have to say six times, Mother, please give me pure knowledge. Six times you have to ask. When you ask for pure knowledge, your Kundalini starts moving upward. So we have to nourish our upper centers with our full confidence. So now raise your right hand in the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side. Press it and please hear you say it twelve times. <coughs> with full confidence in yourself, Mother, I am my own Master. Please say it with full confidence, Mother, I am my own Master. So now, one has to understand that the fundamental truth about you is that you are not this body, not this mind, not this ego, not these conditionings, not this intelligence and not these emotions, but you are the pure Spirit. So now, raise your right hand onto your heart. And here again with full confidence, please say, twelve times, Mother, I am the pure Spirit. Please say it with full confidence, twelve times, Mother, I 
and the pure spirit. Now, raise your right hand on Please say it first twelve times, you haven't said it. On to the corner of your neck and your shoulder and turn your head to your right. Here you have to say sixteen times with full confidence Mother, I am not guilty at all. Mother, I am not guilty at all. You have to know that this all-pervading power of God's love is the ocean of knowledge, is the ocean of compassion, is the ocean of bliss. But above all, it is the ocean of forgiveness and whatever mistakes you have committed can be easily resolved by this ocean of forgiveness. So please forgive yourself and say with full confidence sixteen times, Mother, I am not guilty at all. If you do not say it from your heart, the center won't open to allow the Kundalini to rise. So have faith in me and faith in yourself. Now take your right hand on top of your forehead across with the fingers on one side and thumb on the other side. And now try to put your head down as far as possible. Here again with full confidence, you have to say from your heart, not how many times, from your heart. This is very important. Mother, I forgive everyone in general. I've already told you that if you forgive or don't forgive, you don't do anything. But if you don't forgive now, the Kundalini won't rise, so please forgive all of them without even thinking about them. Now, take back your right hand, the back side of your head, and push back your head as far as possible. Here, without feeling guilty, without counting your mistakes, just for your satisfaction. Please say, O oh Divine Power, if I have done anything wrong, knowingly or unknowingly, please forgive me. Say it again from your heart, not how many times. O oh, Divine Power, if I have done anything wrong, knowingly or unknowingly, please forgive me. Now, now the last chakra is very important. Please stretch your hand and stretch your palm fully. Please stretch your palm fully and put it on top of your fontanelle bone area, which was a soft bone in your childhood. Now, please stretch your fingers backwards. Please stretch your fingers backwards as much as you can. This is important. And now put down your head as far as possible. Here again, I cannot cross over your freedom because I respect it. 
So you have to ask for your Self-realization, I cannot force on you. So now you move your scalp seven times slowly, clockwise, saying seven times, Mother, please give me my Self-realization. <coughs> Please take down your hands. Please open your eyes. Put your hands towards me like this and watch me without thinking. Watch me without thinking. Now please put the right hand towards me like this. Put down your head and see for yourself if there is a cool or a warm or hot air like waves. Breeze is coming out of your fontanelle bone area. Now don't put your hand on top of your head but away from it and see for yourself if there's a cool breeze coming or a warm breeze or some sort of a hot breeze is coming out of your own head. Some people get it little far away. Now, with the left hand now, you put it towards me like this. Now put down your head again, please, and see for yourself if there is, if there is a cool or a warm or a hot breeze coming like waves out of your own fontanelle bone area. Now again once with your right hand, please put down your head and see for yourself if there is cool, warm or hot breeze coming out of your fontanelle bone area. If it is hot means you have not forgiven. Please forgive. Now please forgive everyone. You are not going to miss your Self-realization. Keep away from the head. If you keep on top, you won't feel. Now, please put both your hands towards the sky and push back your head. And here, you ask a question three times. One question you ask three times, any one of these three questions which I tell you. Mother, is this the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost? Mother, is this the all-pervading power of God's love? Or Mother, is this the Parama Chaitanya? Ask any one of these questions three times. Now, please put down your heads. Put down your hands. Now, put both the hands towards me like this. Those who have felt 
cool, warm or hot breeze out of their fontanel bone area or on their fingertips or on their hands. Please raise both your hands. Ah, you got it, all of you. May God bless you. May God. This is what you are feeling for the first time, this all-pervading power, first time. First time you are feeling, you have never felt it before. I bow to you, to all of you now, your saintly life has started. But I again and again request you that whenever I am there, there are crowds and many people come in. But there are very few who really try to become what they have to become. Sahaja Yoga cannot be a certificate, it's a becoming. It's very important at this time of evolutionary phase that we are in, the great responsibility upon all of us to become the Spirit and transform the whole world and help the whole world to solve its problems. So may God bless you. Like yesterday, all those who have not felt can come on this side, but I'll take your leave if you don't mind. I have to do some cooking for Sahaja Yogis today. <laughs> when you leave the hall, there is a pamphlet here which tells you about a follow-up program here in the town hall on Friday the 6th of March at 7.30 p.m. in the lower town hall, the Peace Hall. It also has information on the various centres around Sydney. So if you want more information or you want to proceed with what you've received tonight, there are many people in many districts who can give you a hand to do so. So this you'll find at the entrance where you came in. <laughs>